Hi everyone, I'm Callie. Welcome back in for another episode of Detroit Become Human. In the last episode, I discovered that Marcus is not actually dead. We had a very, very powerful scene with Marcus coming back from being shot by the police in Carl's house. And Marcus had this very intense rebirth where he climbs up the junkyard after finding parts and pieces to fix himself and put himself back together he's standing in the rain looking up smiling and it honestly wasn't until i went back to edit the video and really watch the scene again that i realized how powerful this moment was the music marcus smiling up knowing that he's free he can do whatever he wants to do right now he doesn't have a owner to tell him that he needs to stay in the house or go pick up paints and it's not like marcus really had a horrible life he was treated very very well compared to most other androids he was probably treated the best that i have seen but he still had this overwhelming feeling of I'm free. Going back and rewatching that episode was pretty intense with the music and everything else. Sometimes when you're looking at things blindly for the very first time, you're just kind of taking in all of the emotions that you're feeling. And it's not until you go back to rewatch some of these scenes that you realize how powerful they really are. There was just something about that scene with Marcus that made me realize and even then looking at Kara taking off her button wanting to change her hair I keep calling them buttons I'm just gonna keep calling them that from now on probably but to me in that moment with Kara I kind of just chalked up her impulsively wanting to cut her hair because she is becoming more deviant she's becoming more herself and she wanted to change her hair color she wanted to give herself a haircut yes to make sure that they look differently now that they're in hiding but Maybe also because she's like Marcus, she's feeling that freedom. She's feeling that new life starting, that rebirth. And it was just very powerful to look back on her just kind of like ripping the LED light off and Marcus ripping his off too. It's a pretty, it's a pretty big move for them. It was also interesting to see Connor's side of things, have some funnier moments with Hank last episode where we're kind of talking about his dog and trying to relate to him and get him on our side. He also said that he does have a reason why he hates androids. And I feel like that could be a more ominous or deeper meaning behind that because he just kind of looks at Connor and says, yeah. I don't like androids. I do have something against them. But he doesn't really elaborate on what that is. I'm interested to see if it is just how I explained last episode that he's worried about him taking over his job, that Connor gets things done so much faster than he has ever seen in the investigative work setting. Or maybe there is some deeper, darker reasoning behind why Hank doesn't like androids. And he has all of those bumper stickers, anti-android paraphernalia thrown about his workspace. It makes me feel like he does have a deeper meaning behind it. But to what extent? I think we'll just have to find out. Marcus is probably going to set out to find Jericho. One of the androids in the scrapyard scared the bejeebas out of me and grabbed Marcus and said that there was a safe place that he could go called Jericho. I am assuming that Marcus is going to try to head there now. As far as Kara, we've kind of just stayed along what I originally wanted to do with them. I wanted to stay quiet and safe and secure. And things got a little bit heated with Ralph and <laughs> his very um, interesting wake up, but it was thankfully interrupted by Connor storming in and looking for Kara and Alice, which I decided to sabotage Connor and not have him actually investigate any further. I honestly didn't want to know what to do in that moment. I was worried that if we found Kara, she would be taken into custody and Alice would also be taken back to her father. So I felt like that was the right move at the time. I feel bad for sabotaging Connor's investigation. And it's actually kind of funny because in the end, he looks over at the door like, why did I just do that? Why was I not investigating any further? What's wrong with me? So right now things are, are getting very, very interesting. I'm excited to hop in today because last episode was amazing, but it was very much laying the groundwork for probably what is about to happen today. So I'm excited to hop in. We're going to look through two art packs today. I hope you guys are ready, but I enjoy looking through the art so much. I also switched to controller for this one. I'm not sure what possessed me to switch. I just wanted to try out the immersion of the controller because I heard really good things that 
it's much more immersive this way. So hopefully there's no crazy QTs while I kind of get used to using the controller over a keyboard and mouse, but I think I'll maybe like it a lot better. We'll see at the end of today how I'm feeling about controller. But this looks like the garden that the Zen garden that Amanda was in looks very similar. The sand, the step path that we had to walk on. I went all the way around the garden again just to walk on that path, but it was worth it. It was very cool. The Detroit police station is very like clean, futuristic, new feeling. The holding cells. I like how it has the hands here. It kind of reminds me of Fifth Element. <laughs> when they have to put their hands on the wall when the police show up in their apartments. Sir, are you classified as human? Uh, negative. I am a meat popsicle. The break room. Ooh, that looks like a delicious cheesecake over there in the corner by that guy underneath the first aid. An AED. Someone in my Discord actually shared the clip of what happens if Connor does get um, that one guy coffee. I want to call him Carl, but I feel like that's not his name. Um, but when he gets him coffee, he just continues to talk smack and Connor's just left there standing, holding the cup of coffee. Like, what do I do with this? You said you wanted it. It was a very funny interaction. I kind of wish that I would have gone with that one. Oh, the chief's office. I love how his cup just says cop. All of his medals. I also love how that one computer screen kind of melts down onto the desk to become the keyboard. Very cool. And he has a Detroit fist um, holding his pencils and scissors. I'm guessing that's what that is. The office with the cubicles and it's a lot more evidence on the middle table that I guess they have to sort through. Put into the evidence locker. I would hate to work in that office. It's like a fishbowl. I would feel like everyone's watching me all the time. He doesn't have any privacy. There's no curtains, no nothing. Usually in TV shows, like, you know, you get called into the chief's office and he pulls the... He pulls the blinds, but this chief, his everything is just out there. I would feel like I'm a fish or like a zoo animal trapped in there at work. I don't think I would like that. The interrogation room. That entire scene with the interrogation was very cool. I'm guessing maybe that was the android in the in the attic being interrogated, or maybe just an android in general being interrogated. He looks very dirty, disheveled. His jaw is broken. I wonder who this is. Maybe someone we haven't yet met yet uh, met yet, or maybe Amanda. Oh, maybe these are just artist uh, sketches of what they originally thought Amanda was going to be. Okay, the original artwork for Amanda. The boho, beautiful look. Holding hydrangeas here instead of roses with clippers. Interesting. So maybe this is what they originally expected Amanda to look like. I like the Amanda that they put into the game. Police. More police uniforms. <laughs> Hank getting chewed out by the chief. I kind of wish I would have sat in on this conversation. I wonder what I missed out on. He was obviously angry. So maybe he's talking about how Connor is doing all the work for him. Why is he showing up late? Or maybe he's just being a chief. Typical chief. Gotta be hard on him. Ah, oh, the motel. 
Looks a little bit more dilapidated and run down here. Not that motels in the city are clean, but I don't know. I don't remember all the graffiti and disheveledness of the motel. The 24 hour mart. I think it's interesting how like here, I've talked about this before, but the new age building versus the old dilapidated brick. And we kind of see that in today where you go to an old town that they're trying to make look better. And there's like a Wendy's, McDonald's, Subway, and the Wendy's decides to renovate. And now you've got this big, beautiful Wendy's fast food, but it looks so nice because they've updated it. And it kind of looks out of place. The abandoned house. I'm surprised by how many non-futuristic cars there are just kind of like laying around. Most of them do look kind of like broken down, but there were also these AI, I'm guessing, vehicles that were going around. But like Hank has an older car that he still drives. And I've noticed that van back there. I don't remember the actual van in the game, but just kind of noticing like that kind of looks like a Buick of some sort. The laundromat that guy sleeping if someone would have taken a jacket off of my lap i definitely would have woken up <laughs> he is a heavy sleeper oh kara pulling a gun on the guy that's right because we could have taken todd's gun and i guess ultimately used it to rob the store yep I feel like we would have caused too many waves with that. It's very scary. Plus, what is Alice to think during this? Kara holding up a gun to an innocent person? She was already kind of like freaking out about us stealing. Oh, maybe this was originally another version of the 24-hour mart with gas stations. That would have been pretty cool to see. The abandoned car, Michigan tags. Oh, this must be inside the motel. So that's what it would have looked like in there. Kind of gross that the comforters don't match. <laughs> I don't know why that weirds me out, but it just does. The bathroom. That's right, we could have taken a shower. There was no dead body in this... in this bathroom. The water is probably not running in the abandoned house, too. It would have been much more comfortable, but... How would we have, have escaped? I mean, Connor and Hank were pretty on it coming to the abandoned house. They showed up after looking at the case report, got the, um, got the report from the 24 hour mark person and also from somebody else. I feel like they even mentioned someone else seeing us along the way, but the motel guy definitely would have said something and said what room we were in. And there's no way to escape. It's one way in, one way out in this room. So could have been very different if we would have decided to stay here. And Connor is very on it. He immediately knew where we were after scanning the area just once. Dragon Pawn Shop. I don't remember seeing that. Detroit's... Pushing duck? Picking duck? Oh, Chinese, Taiwanese. Ooh, that sounds delicious right now. I haven't had Chinese food in a really long time. Inside the abandoned house. Looks pretty much the same. <laughs> Dilapidated, run down. This is maybe downstairs. Someone's holding a knife. Maybe that's... That must be, uh, Ralph. 
But look, there's a couple other people that are hanging out in here. And look at the pinball machine, Heavy Rain. That's another one of the games that was made by this developer. I think it came out before this one came out, so it's an older game. Kara, I love her poncho. This looks like something I would wear. <laughs> I like the pixie cut on her versus this like bob. I think the pixie cut looks much, much more like Kara. Oh, this must be Ralph holding the gopher and the knife <laughs> looking disheveled. I wonder why they blurred out his face. So let's go to pack four. I already unlocked it. I don't recognize this church. I don't know what this is from. Oh, is it part of the graveyard or the, um, the graveyard? That's kind of what it feels like. It's a graveyard of androids. It's awful, especially when you know that they last a hundred years. They're just wandering around disposed of like a piece of trash and they didn't even bother to turn them off they just shoved them all down there without taking their core component out it's very scary i mean i guess humans now they they just kind of look at androids like a piece of garbage or a piece of plastic they don't really see what we're seeing because we have been playing in the role of androids i think that the game is very good at putting you into the Andrew android shoes right away and immediately forming that emotional connection to the androids. I have noticed that about this game, how I'm always kind of sticking up for the android side and not really looking at the human perspective. I try to put myself into both shoes, but this game does a very good job at kind of seeing the birth of androids and them coming into their own and wanting to kind of be on their side a bit. But I try to remember my roots. I try to remember that I'm human. And what if I was living in this world? I guess if I had an android that was acting up and I bought it and it stopped working, I would just give it to the store and not think twice about it, not think twice about where it's going, not care. And obviously the company doesn't care. It's interesting to think about. This was such an intense moment. Being in the rain, being and seeing and hearing everything that was going on there, especially after we fixed our audio. The audio in this entire scene was amazingly done. Between the buzzing and the ringing and the crunching and not being able to really see well at first and then fixing ourselves and rebirthing Marcus. It was very, it was a very good scene. This is the corner of John's coffee. Oh, it's not organic here. <laughs> it's organic in the game and the drugstore. I think both of those are pretty much like that. The Android compartment area over to the left. Oh, the inside of the kitchen area where Ralph was doing RA9. Oh, there's a bird cage here with the dead bird. The dead bird was just kind of laying on a washing machine or dishwasher. It wasn't, it's very interesting that they added that. Look at the little mouse in the corner and the rake and the the shovel. It's as if he's keeping a little area of his things that mean something to him. His previous life as a gardener. Not sure what the dead bird is. What's up with the dead bird? It's very interesting. What else was there? Money and a watch. A broken watch. It wasn't ticking. Hmm. Oh, whoa. 
Yeah, I mean, I guess it kind of does look like that from the top of the stairs. The coffee table, dining table thing there. The only thing that's different is the heavy rain pinball machine, which would have actually been really cool to have in the game versus their like blast into space um, arcade game. That would have been really cool to see a callback to heavy rain like that. Oh, wow. That looks wildly different with the... Oh, that's a powerful quote. They live, we sleep. They live, we sleep. Whoa, what's happening in the back room there? It looks like someone's being like crashed out of the window. Oh, maybe they like flew through the house? Because of the opening? Whoa. I don't know what the, what is up with that. Interesting. Sneaking out of the window or into the house through the window, maybe? Looks like they're facing this way. Maybe another way that we originally could have gotten into the house. Kara cutting off her button with the, ew, the dead... The dead body in the shower. Oh. I'm glad I didn't find that before I decided to do all of that. I don't know this scene. Traffic? Is that Kara and Alice? Maybe if we would have been found, we would have like booked it and ran or something. That looks like an anxiety attack them climbing out oh my gosh oh that looks terrifying maybe this is what would have happened if we stayed somewhere else or maybe if we did actually search with connor man i would have been sweating <laughs> i'm kind of glad that i didn't get this <laughs> This entire scene, this looks so terrifying. One missed, like, one missed button, and I feel like we could have died. Oh, interesting. Androids downed their bare bones before they put the skin mesh on. Marcus. What is that? Maybe like their memory chip or something? Taking out the red one for the blue one? Red pill or blue pill? The optical eye part. Oh, it's the, uh, the auditory. That's what it is. Okay, so it's the audio. I remember now. Replacing the audio with the good one. The broken one's red. Okay. I got way too deep about that. Oh, look at the broken eye. And then the fixed one. He has two different color eyes now, I think. I feel like I remember seeing that. And then the replacement part for the pump. His broken legs. It's kind of crazy that he could just snap on legs again after all of that. All of his blue blood everywhere. Oh, I think that was the last one. Okay, that was a shorter pack. I don't know if I mentioned this, but uh, I like your interior decorating. It really reflects your personality. I mean, I like it. Interesting thing to say. She likes my game room. So I'm kind of nervous going in with controller right away. Hopefully this first story isn't too intense with controller stuff and I can kind of get the hang of it. Um, if I miss some QTs, I'm sorry. I just wanted to try controller and hopefully it goes well. Uh, I have been playing a lot of God of War, which requires a ton of QT checks. So hopefully we'll be fine. I think it'll be fine. I'm just interested to see 
how the immersion is with using a controller. And I think there's even parts where like you have to pull up or pull down. Someone in the comments mentioned that it's- Did you know the motto of Detroit is, we hope for better things? No, I didn't know that actually. We hope for better things. Is that the real life motto? The, mo the Baltimore motto is, it's more than just murder here. So that's a much more hopeful motto. Several sources report that CyberLife has provided Detroit police with a prototype detective android. Although police assistant androids have existed for several years now, this would be the first case of an android being authorized to play an active role in criminal investigations. He's not in the android compartment. You're talking about Connor on the news. I think it's in November 6th, 4.30 p.m. Flashback from the guy at the graveyard. The junkyard. I keep saying graveyard. Okay, so that's what we're looking for. Look for the graffiti. Oh, the trail to Jericho. Yep, so this is definitely it. Ferndale. They missed her. Could you spare some change? I don't think I have any money. So LT to look at the next graffiti. Okay. Kind of looks like it's right here. One symbol to find. Hold Y to analyze. That's the next one. Looks like a lion, maybe. A lion, yeah. Okay. I wonder what that symbol means. It looks like a square, but like the corners are kind of shaved off. Let's see what this is. It's like an article. Tech addict, CyberLife's fortune teller computer. CyberLife develops world's most powerful quantum calculator. I've seen that Black Mirror episode. <laughs> Android soldiers, perfect killing machines. CyberLife has unveiled a new quantum supercomputer. Capable of extra flops. One billion billion operations per second. That is a lot. The equivalent of several human minds in a single machine. The computer was specifically designed to analyze vast data from various sources and generate predictions. Philip Seymour, Seymour Butts. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. CyberLife's director of Futurology is highly confident We've been testing for a while and the results are going to wow people. The computer will be used to calculate the probability of mass extinction events, such as aggressive alien invasions or global climate disasters like meteors or super viruses. Aggressive alien invasions. I guess it's good that they're getting ready for that though. The computer can then help us to anticipate and prepare for such calamities, ensuring humanity is never caught off guard. Despite doomsday predictions from those fearful that AI is gaining too much influence already, many experts are hailing this as a quantum leap in applied artificial intelligence. Not really sure how to think about this. I think that it's good that the computer can calculate probabilities of mass extinction events, but sure there's a probability of some sort, but there's always gonna be a margin of error and it's not gonna do anything to really help us prepare for it will it this is giving me a lot of black mirror and also a little bit of mass effect vibes thinking about the quantum computer of the star child and trying to fix chaos and i don't know I'm not sure how i feel about that android astronauts to explore io nasa sends android crew into space hackers target solar panels for latest ransom scam I feel like hackers are just going to be more and more prevalent as years go on, as people access more and more technology. NASA announced the launch of a five Android crew to explore IO, one of Jupiter's satellites. That's interesting. The journey will last three years and is expected to teach us much about the formation of our solar system. 
Though not the first androids in space, this is the first all-machine crew, proving that androids are sufficiently reliable to be entrusted with the entire mission. Androids are an extraordinary asset for the conquest of space, said Michael Shelley, director of NASA. Cosmic radiation destroys human DNA. Humans suffer many effects from long-term space travel, while androids are immune to most of these issues. NASA confirmed no return journey was planned. Oh, they're not coming back. And the androids would work on IO for several months before being destroyed by the extreme conditions of the planet. I guess because Jupiter, doesn't Jupiter have a bunch of storms? It's just like constant storms, I'm pretty sure. Or maybe that's Saturn. It's been a while since I've read up on my, on my planets. Interesting stuff. I feel like an all android crew is interesting and also really cool. But at the same time, look at Marcus and Kara and all the other deviants. What if they become deviated on Jupiter and then they don't want to do their task anymore and then they're just kind of left there to die? Sounds awful. Android only. Well, I guess we're gonna take the other stairs. Blending in. It's gotta be so strange. Seeing the Android compartment and not walking through it and living on the edge out here. All right, there's something over there to interact with much else we're still looking for oh i think it's straight ahead of me actually the lion do you know where jericho is that's a no okay oh there's two symbols in here so here's one What these symbols mean. Oh, there's the other one. Stars on a building. Okay. Bronco bar. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Find the next graffiti. flower shop Don't forget please. Okay, we can't walk right now. I guess we could have crossed over there. I'll just wait. Aluminum rims, archway garage. Oh, I think I see our building over there with the rainbow on it. I think that's our building. Secondhand clothes for men. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> we do it all. This is really cool. I love the ambiance of being on the streets of Detroit right now. I think it's really, really neat. Okay, so this is our building. There's two symbols. There's one down here that I saw when we were coming up. And this one up here. A robot. Okay. Oh, is that guy dead? He looks like maybe he's sleeping or... Oh, no, he's moving. Okay. He's fine. He is okay. Still beating. Still beating heart of Detroit. Why is it blue? All right. Maybe we could cross again. Not really sure where we're supposed to be going. I'm just kind of looking for the graffiti. 
feeling out where the game wants me to go. I guess we'll just keep walking this way. <clears throat> Ooh, a bagel store. Find the graffiti. All right, so not this way. Let's go ahead and cross. They're playing ball over there. They're playing catch. Looks like maybe like a rundown gas station. Not in business anymore. It's an interesting park here. Oh, the robots. I saw them. Can I see them on this side of the fence? Okay, one. Here's another one. Two. There's one more somewhere. seeing it. Oh, we can crouch. Police right there. <laughs> okay. Apparently it does not matter. Oh, there it is. Got to remove this. The next one. I'm guessing we have to go in there. It's just a trash can. Nothing to find over here. Okay. Weekday rates. So, parking, but not used anymore. Okay. Um, well, oh, look at that giant shark. There's our artwork over there. There's three. Maybe the other two. Oh, there's one. So maybe the other one is up on the other side. Find a way to reach the roof. Okay. Is this gonna be like, oh, maybe not. Oh, actually, <laughs> yep. <laughs> like the last of us pulling the dumpsters to get places. There's the other one. Nice. Okay. Red building. Hmm. Reconstruct. Okay. Use the right stick to select a route. Ah, oh, this is really cool. RT to preview. Rewind, try another route, would be too unstable. Okay. This is awesome. Okay, that would work. Let's do it. Wow, that's really cool. All right, red building with big lettering on it.
There it is. Alright. There's three or two. Kind of seems safer. Straight or in the hole, maybe? Oh no, I'm just running across. Okay. Grabbing onto that or jumping for it? That's kind of a long jump. That works. looks a little weird. I don't even see the symbol. It's just kind of like a yellow graffiti with some... I don't know. Oh, probably this room. Yep, this looks exactly like what we just looked at. There's the yellow. see it I was like why is it updating <laughs> okay that was very lucky it's hidden there between the columns that's pretty cool I just want to see if there's anything else over here Maybe he was trying to find Jericho, but didn't make it. cool reach the boat wow so what a bunch of androids are staying on this broken down ship okay ah! oh my god okay we can go that way oh my god that scared me so bad Ooh. all right that was so scary. I'm loving this like silent dialogue moment that we're having with Marcus. Finding this place, it's very 
It's very intense. I feel like they're chalking it up to be something, something pretty mind blowing. I wish we could hear his inner monologue, but also I like how it's done. We're just kind of lost in our own thoughts right now. Trying to find this place. Wow, we are high up here. Oh, I feel like if I was doing this in real life, my knees, I wouldn't be able to move. You know how, like, I, I don't know if any of you are afraid of heights, but if I'm in a setting where I'm not strapped to anything and it's just free like this, I'm terrified. This, I wouldn't be able to move. I would be so, like, stuck. Like, not like a statue. That's how I get when I'm in these settings with heights. Such a terrifying feeling. Like you're just paralyzed. Wow, this is beautiful. No trespassing. Jump? Oh, there's water below. Okay. of faith. Wow. It's one way to get up in here. Where did our jacket go? How did we lose our jacket? Well, this is creepy. Find, find a way to see. Oh, there's rats. What is that, a flashlight? Oh, this is creepy. Uh, I don't love this. What did that say? Explore the boat? Oh, Jesus. Okay. Well, hopefully they're friendly androids, right? They're not gonna come out and attack me like they did in the graveyard situation. It's locked. I just saw a prompt or something. Okay. Dead end. Look. Push. a room. What is that noise? I feel like we're not alone. I mean, I know that there are probably other androids here, but I don't know. What was the point of this room? RA9 written everywhere. Okay, so maybe that was the point. about this door. Locked. I 
like my heart just like popped out of my entire mouth. <laughs> Oh my god, why was that so terrifying? Why are they running around? We're friends. It doesn't need to be this way. What the heck? Where do they come from? Okay. Why does it always have to be so scary? <clears throat> yeah, I'm pressing X. Okay. Okay. Definitely was not X. I think the key bindings are... Hang on, I'm gonna look at the menu for a second. Wait, no, no not that menu. That's gonna be detrimental in a QT. It's a weird bug. Okay, locked. That's probably locked too, but might as well check, right? Oh, it's unlocked. Okay. Um, it is creepy in here. Oh boy. All right, I'm just gonna look back. Oh, I guess I can't. Okay. I thought there was more down there. <laughs> I don't do I don't do scary stuff, guys. Like I really I just I don't do this. I don't play scary games. I don't love scary games. Going. Marcus, there was no way to save you. Oh my goodness. That was a rough fall. Hello? Welcome to Jericho. What a way to get to Jericho. Why was that so scary? It didn't have to be that way. Can't they put some like lights and not just be standing around in a circle? Uh, who was that person running through the halls? I don't understand why that had to be so intense. But this is why I don't play scary games. As you guys can see, I was very on edge during all of that and my heart is still pounding very hard. We can look at the world stats now though, which is nice because I have internet again. Well, aside from being unnecessarily scary, that was very cool. Um, this entire Marcus finding Jericho, looking for the clues, looking at graffiti, which is a really, really smart way for androids to hide the path to find Jericho. It makes me feel like there has to be someone in charge that is putting all of this graffiti everywhere to help people find it. I want to know more about the symbol. I wonder if they dive deeper into all of that, or maybe it was just a symbol that they all decided on. I was expecting more of maybe a triangle because I feel like triangles are kind of what the androids are symbolized as. They always have that triangle on their shirt. I just wonder the origin behind the symbol, and I hope that we get to learn more about it. But if not, that's fine too. I'm just... Very curious where the symbol originated from. It was a really smart way to do it to help androids that are looking for Jericho to find it that way. But overall, this was a very intense episode for Marcus, which I honestly feel like a lot of his episodes are like that. I feel like they're really gearing up Marcus to be one of the bigger people that is involved in the android rebellion. I mean, there's no other way to really put it. These androids are tired. They're dying. They're fed up. They're figuring out that they want to be masterless. They want to be free. They're all escaping to this Jericho instead of being abused every day, instead of being mistreated by their owners, instead of laying in a junk field just waiting to rot. They're looking for a way to live. With Marcus finding this and his rebirth in the scrapyard and 
all of the interesting things that we have done with Marcus so far, I feel like they're just kind of building up his character to be a big role in this Jericho android rebellion. I think that he's probably going to play a pretty big role in it. November 6, 3.02 p.m. We're back with Hank and Connor. Eating some food at the Chicken Shack. Oh, hey. God, he almost got hit by that AI car. Reconcile with Lieutenant Anderson. That's right, because we got into a fight with him at the police station. Yep. You want to flood it? Is he gambling? That shit hot tip you gave me sent me back a week's wages, baby. He's gambling. Come on. This is different. It's 100% guaranteed. You can't go wrong. 100%. That's a pretty good guarantee. Who is this guy? Pedro Abdar, unemployed, illegal gambling fraud. Not surprising. It's also kind of not surprising that Hank is illegally gambling with this dude. Police lieutenant, no record. I feel like we've already scanned Hank before. Gary Kay's business owner, resisting arrest, breach of hygiene regulations. Yikes. Hopefully Hank doesn't get any food poisoning. Oh, look. Sanitation rating, C60. That can't be good. Renewal refused. Oh boy. Okay. So no renewal on their licensure. Smashed potatoes, baked macaroni, slow cooked green beans. Oh, all of this sounds delicious. Actually, I don't know after hearing about all this sanitation stuff. Our sauces are homemade. What are you waiting for? All right, I don't think there's anything else to scan. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm in. Damn straight. Yeah. Hey, you won't regret this. What is your problem? Don't you ever do as you're told? Look, you don't have to follow me around like a poodle. Apologize for behavior, partners, reconcile, review facts. Let's apologize. I'm sorry for my behavior back at the police station. I didn't mean to be unpleasant. Oh, wow. You've even got a brown nose and a Oh, he liked bro. that. <laughs> As if cyber life thought everything, huh? Yeah, he does kind of sound like a brown noser. Yeah, Connor's like looking around awkwardly. <laughs> What did we get? A hamburger at the chicken place? Looks delicious though. It's probably very good. I just hope you don't get food poisoning. Extra large soda, pineapple passion, yum. All right, anything else? Ah, oh, thanks Gary, I'm starving. Don't leave that thing here. Oh, not a chance. Follows me everywhere. Connor's like <laughs> sideways look at Hank. <clears throat> Gambling cholesterol company. Enjoy your meal. Let's talk about the cholesterol in your a little bit. Your meal contains 1.4 times the recommended daily intake of calories and twice the cholesterol level. You shouldn't eat that. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got to die of something. I guess that's true. I'm surprised he... After I pressed it, I was worried he would not like that answer. Gambling company. I don't want to alarm you, Lieutenant, but I think your friends are engaged in oh, illegal activities. no, I... Well, everybody does what they have to to get by. As long as they're not hurting anybody, I don't bother them. Okay, good. He's not mad at us. I thought we were going to talk about, like, us being together. I don't know, me keeping him company. About Connor, Hank, androids. Let's talk about Connor. Is there anything you'd like to know about me? Hell no. 
Well, yeah. Um, why do they make you look so goofy and give you that weird voice? Cyberlife androids are designed to work harmoniously with humans. Both my appearance and voice were specifically designed to facilitate my integration. Mm. Well, they fucked up. Hank, uh, that's so mean. Uh, uh, Hank and androids, deviants. Connor is beautiful. What are you talking about? Can I ask you a personal question, Lieutenant? Why do you hate androids so much? I have my reasons. Okay, a little ominous. Maybe I should tell you what we know about deviants. You read my mind. Proceed. We believe that a mutation occurs in the software of some androids, which can lead to them emulating a human emotion. In English, please. They don't really feel emotions. They just get overwhelmed by irrational instructions, which can lead to unpredictable behavior. Emotions always screw everything up. The androids aren't as different from us as we thought. <laughs> you ever dealt with deviants before? A few months back, a deviant was threatening to jump off the roof with the little girl. I managed to save her. So I guess you've done all your homework, right? Know everything there is to know about me? Um, truth. I know you graduated top of your class. You made a name for yourself in several cases and became the youngest lieutenant in Detroit. I also know you've received several disciplinary warnings in recent years, and you spend a lot of time in bars. <laughs> so what's your conclusion? <laughs> Sincere, psychological, let's be psychological. I know you're an experienced officer, and I'd like to earn your trust. I'm sure we can solve this case if we manage to work together. That sounded good. That's how we wanted it to be. Let's go. What was that? I just got a report of a suspected deviant. It's a few blocks away. We should go have a look. Okay. I'll let you finish your meal. I'll be in the car if you need me. A deviant nearby. Hopefully it's not Kara again. <laughs> hey, Connor. You run out of batteries or what? I'm sorry. I was making a report to Cyberlife. Uh. Mm. Well, do you plan on staying in the elevator? No. I'm coming. <laughs> Their banter back and forth is getting funnier and funnier. Question the suspect. Hey, what do we know about this guy? Okay. Not much. Just that a neighbor reported that he heard strange noises coming from this floor. Nobody's supposed to be living here, but the neighbor said he saw a man hiding an LED under his cap. Oh, Christ, if we have to investigate every time somebody hears a strange noise. Others? <clears throat> from Rock Pigeon. We're gonna need more cops. Hey, were you really making a report back there in the elevator? Just by closing your eyes? Correct. Shit. Yeah. Wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, I'd probably make everything much easier if they could do it that quickly. All right, I think we just go inside. Oh, or knock. Anybody home? Open up, Detroit police! Well, someone's in Stay there. behind me. Got it. They ran when we said police. All right, let's check in here. Ooh, there is a symbol that we've seen before on the wall. What's this, an article? I'm just gonna like read the titles and we can read this past the tipping point and red ice epidemic. All right, we'll read that in the menu. It seems like kind of a high stakes situation, so I don't want to leave Hank hanging. What the fuck 
fuck is this? Oh, what the heck? Why are there so many uh, pigeons in here? Jesus, this place stinks. Investigate the apartment? Look at all these pigeons! What in the world? Oh my gosh, it's like hard uh, to move. It looks like we came for nothing. Our man. All right, let's find some clues. UFD Urban Farms poster. Fields in the heart of the city. Okay. What's with this poster? Is it the hole? No, the corner. Poster corner, recycled paper, recently moved. So there's something behind it. It's okay. gone. A diary? Look at all the symbols in here. This is written by an android. Look at the perfect font. Found something? Wow. I don't know. It looks like a notebook, but it's indecipherable. Uh. All right, let's continue looking. Some stuff in the fridge. No stuff in the fridge. All right, so it's definitely an android in here. But what's up with all of the pigeons? I don't understand why there's so many pigeons. They care for wild animals. So they bought a bunch of bird feed and what scattered it around the apartment? Interesting. Military jacket, 10% of them. Initials RT. RT. Probably initials. He put his initials in his jacket? That's something your mom does when you're in first grade. <laughs> A fake ID. Rupert Travis. The driver's license is fake. Okay. Cool. At least we didn't come for nothing. <laughs> Hope these pigeons are so disorienting. <gasps> what is that? Sample? Ugh. <clears throat> is it blue blood? It is. Model WB reported missing. Okay. Ah, Jesus, I hate these things. And their LED button is removed. Deactivated. About a month later. Its LED is in the sink. Suspect is a deviant. I'm surprised it was an android. No human could live with all these fucking patients. RA9 written all over the wall. Any idea what it means? RA9. Written 2,471 times. What? It's the same sign Ortiz's android wrote on the shower wall. Why are they obsessed with this sign? That's a good question. Looks like mazes or something. Yeah, it does. Like the circle thing. Compulsive writing. Obsessive compulsive writing. Open marker, use recently, midnight mood, black, still wet. So that's what they were using to write RA9. When in stool, recently disturbed, traces of avian fecal matter. I'm sure there's probably fecal matter all up in this building. Okay, so let's see what happened. They were writing, they were here recently. Wait, there's something else in this area. Wait, I need to go back. They ran to the living room. Okay. Real so books. So let's. I thought I was the last guy in Detroit. So. Electronic See what's books out you here. can't smell the paper. See the. The turning yellow pages. Yes, Hank. That's why I love library books. Finger marks recently, traces of avian fecal matter, no fingerprints, because he's a android. Skid mark, traces of galvanized steel, recent. OK. 
guys. <laughs> Metal hook recently broken. Okay, so he ran into this and probably knocked it over. Ran towards the entrance. Okay. And then what? He heard us enter. Got scared. What? Hid in the closet? Oh. Suspect is still here. They're in the attic. Okay. They just turned in yellow. I like to hide in attics. You have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? All right, Hank. Better be ready. There's someone up in here. Oh, oh my god! God damn fucking pigeons! Get him! What are you waiting for? Chase it! Go! I'm gonna be so slow at this. Oh no! Let's go. We've already missed enough of our QTs. Balance, super safe, fast, but risky. Let's go for it. Safer detour, crowded, safer. of survival 89% save Hank or chase we gotta save Hank he's gonna get away we can't just leave oh, Hank shit. hanging oh, literally we had it fuck it's my fault I should have been faster oh well, Connor it's not your fault you'd have caught it if it weren't for me Hank's our friend now that's all right it was worth saving him we know what it looks like we'll find it that was intense. My heart's pounding. I'm horrible at QTs. I think because it's our hey, first Connor. day using controller. <laughs> Nothing. He almost maybe wanted to thank us there, but then decided against it. At least Hank is our friend now. It says Hank friend. Let's go. We made a friend today. Wow, that was intense. My back hurts. I think because I was like, trying to press the buttons really hard and I kept getting the buttons wrong and stressing out over the wrong buttons. I was so worried I was going to get Connor killed. But I guess it's good because Connor, even if Connor does die, I think he comes back. Okay, so we had the lunch break. 
um, which was actually pretty funny seeing Hank in more of his like chill element, eating, having a yummy hamburger from a very unsanitary place <laughs> and talking to him about some of the stuff that we we talked about. I wanted to bring up the cholesterol because I just thought it would be like a funny interaction, kind of like with the dog and the rock music. I think he liked those ones. It's always kind of a hit or miss with Hank. You just never know what he's going to want to hear. So I feel like kind of playing with him a little bit more usually brings out his good side being funny. I don't know. I think he likes the banter with Connor. I think that he is warming up to some of the some of the banter with us. So I decided to do cholesterol first because I was like, let's just get on him for his hamburger. And sure enough, he did. He did actually like that one. And I thought that company was talking about like, hey, it's good that we're hanging out together. But then he ended up bringing up the gambling dude, which ended up going up well too. He was just saying how you can't catch everybody. And I feel like sometimes investigators do get involved with stuff like that, at least in most of the shows that I have watched, they kind of just turn a blind eye to those pettier things because investigators focus on the more gritty things that police officers take care of in the moment, but then brush off and give to the investigator to look deeper into. I noticed that with investigators. That's why I said like right away that I wasn't surprised that he was illegally gambling. It's just it's something that Hank would definitely do. But finding the diary was actually a big unlock for us. We missed something, though. We missed one thing, and it led to an ending that we could have gotten. So maybe we couldn't have found Rupert, because it branches off and says find Rupert, which we did. Um, let's turn the stats on real quick. Looks like not a lot of people asked about cholesterol, which is interesting. I was just trying to be, like, funny with him. I read Hank, like I've already said, as someone that enjoys the banter between Connor and him. We saw the RA9 references, read past the tipping point, which we didn't actually read. I think I'm going to go over and read that now before we get started in the next bit. Only 66% of people saved Hank. It was like a no-brainer for me. Sure, he had an 80% chance of survival, but... Hank would have hated us if we just kept pursuing the android and let him just kind of struggle his way back up the wall or he could have possibly died. There's always that 20% chance that he could have lost his grip and fell off the wall and died, but I couldn't have just left him there. He would have hated us. We wouldn't have gotten that friendship status. I'm pretty sure that saving Hank is what ultimately pushed us up into the friend zone with him. So it was a good thing that we did that. Sure. I feel like it was this one too. Past the tipping point. Yep. Green Earth. Earth's environment officially beyond repair. Bees officially extinct. Global famine to follow. That is a scary news article. Environmentalists have long warned us about a tipping point. The moment at which global warming reaches a level that is irreversible. Scientists are now saying we have officially passed it. Haven't they been saying that? I think we're kind of at that cusp right now. Global rainforests have been reduced by 79% since 2000. Coastal corals by 58%. Polar ice has melted to such an extent that rising sea levels have many states struggling to help keep the water out of their coastal towns. With these cooling factors so diminished, there is now too much carbon in the atmosphere for the environment to ever absorb. Jason Reese, head of the Global Environment Agency, said this study confirms that many of us have suspected for a long time but the real calamity is the linked decline of natural resources. From energies to minerals, which are almost exhausted and can never be replaced. Many environmentalists have criticized Reese's comments as discouraging people from taking action. But Reese has defied these criticisms. It's important people accept the reality of the situation. The planet will keep getting hotter now. The only question is how fast. Okay, red ice epidemic. The latest narcotic crisis to ravage Detroit is definitely an epidemic. We have seen so much red ice, even in like smaller settings, car is home um, with Todd and all the way up to, you know, on the streets. It's everywhere. I feel like we've seen it a lot since we've started playing. NATO Security Council divided over Arctic dispute. UN world uh, warns of World War III. 
The latest narcotic crisis to ravage Detroit, the synthetic stimulant informally known as red ice, has become the drug of choice for Detroit's growing underclass. Analysts have pointed to two Detroit to Detroit status as the epicenter of Android production, suggesting the drug flourishes in the dissatisfaction caused by Android's taking human jobs. Sociologist Dr. Julian Carter has drawn the same link with androids. As CyberLife's androids spread across the country, they will bring red ice with them. Poor men and women desperate to make ends meet are vulnerable to become users or even dealers. Yep. Not only is the popularity of this drug spreading rapidly, but its chemical composure is uniquely dangerous. Therium, the main ingredient in android blue blood, is among the active agents in red ice and has a highly destabilizing effect on hormone production. The National Association for Narcotic Prevention says that the problem is going to get worse. The purity of ingredients is very low and deteriorating. America's biggest narcotics industry is only likely to grow. Red ice dealers are reported to have an unofficial motto, where the blood is blue, the ice is red, and the money is green. Got all the colors. Yeah, this is, it's unavoidable. I mean, people are unhappy. They wanna sell drugs to make money quickly. With that comes a lifestyle of drugs. We've had this happen multiple times with different drugs all throughout the world. It's just unfortunate and it's kind of scary that the main ingredient is therium the blue blood and the effect that it has on hormone production also a very huge red flag in a time where already in another news article we've seen that reproduction rates are down because of the economy because job loss and all of that no one wants to have kids they're having android kids instead not great not it's not looking good for for humans as a whole the longevity of humanity it's looking very bleak november 6 5 p.m who are you fugitives just like you my name is josh i'm simon north Trail, Android, Jericho, Refuge, um, the trail. And you knew that only an android could follow the trail, didn't you? Only those who are like us can find Jericho. If you could decipher the signs, it's because one of us trusted you enough to give you the key. This place will make me free. Find Jericho. Free android, Jericho. I want to know free. And hiding just to stay alive. That's freedom to you? Humans hate us. Hiding is the only way we can survive. There is no safe place for those like us. If humans knew we were here, they'd kill us. She looks familiar. Um, let's ask about Jericho. This is Jericho? It's a refuge for those who don't want to be slaves anymore. I understand how you feel, but we have more freedom here than you ever did. Lost, somber, lucid, direct. Maybe I was never really free. Maybe I was only what my master wanted me to be. And now, I need to decide who I really am. Wow. You're lost, just like the rest of us. We didn't ask for this. All we can do now is deal with it. You're safe here. You can stay with us as long as you want. Go and see Lucy. She might be able to help you. Somebody singing? Oh, we have an injury from falling down on that pipe. It's a pretty big fall. Um... Someone is definitely singing very ominously in here. Marcus brought up a good point that I even thought about as I was very scaredly coming through the boat tunnels trying to find the androids that I knew were tucked away in here. This doesn't look like freedom. Sure, it might be a start. It's a place where the deviated androids can come and be free. Like Marcus said, it's 
freedom looks really rough here right now. Hopefully these people can move on from this place and it's temporary, but I mean, they don't really have anywhere else to go. It's true. This seems like the safest place that they have found an abandoned ship that obviously can't take off or go anywhere anytime soon, but it looks really sad in here. It looks, I mean, it's better. It's a step up from the junkyard, but it's still not a place for a free living body to be. It looks awful here. I can see why Marcus is taken back like this is Jericho, but maybe this is a new concept, a new way. It probably happened so quickly and they didn't know where else to turn to, but yeah, it's just, it's very, it's very ominous and bleak in here. Look at them just kind of like standing around without a master, but kind of trapped here in a way. Okay, so settle in. Find Lucy, explore. Alright. Start a fire. Make it nice and bright in here. You obviously don't need warmth, but... Oh look, they're coming to hang out by the fire. Can I do that with all these barrels? Oh, that one's not open. Is that the one singing? I've heard humans are afraid of dying too. What's wrong with them? Do you know what happens after death? No. No, I don't. Well, I'm about to find out. What's your name? Marcus. I was glad to meet you, Marcus. What did she share with us? See what she shared with us. I just want to light all these barrels. I feel like it makes it homier in here. I think maybe that was the only one. Can I talk to him again? Look at all of these. They're just like standing here. What's this? Crate already emptied. What was it like parts and pieces, components that they've been hoarding on the ship? Cyberlife, yeah. Cyberlife Warehouse and Docks, West Torrance Avenue, Detroit. Calculating route. Ah. Okay. Maybe Marcus will eventually go out and look for parts to help some of these people. I have to assume that the lady that we just saw um, that died, she probably just needed better parts or something. RA9 written all over the walls here. Yeah, see, they like the fire. <gasps> what the heck? Is that an android kid? I was just laying there. They threw him out when they didn't want him anymore. He was living on the streets before we brought him here. They'll all shut down if we don't find a way to help them. To help them, we need blue blood and biocomponents. We salvage what we can from those who shut down. But there's never enough. So, how do they survive? They won't. We're slowly dying out. I'm confused. 
when we were in the store with Kara, it's the the broadcast the person selling all of the cyber life stuff said that they can last a hundred years without new batteries or new components. So why has it been a hundred years since these androids have been around? I don't think so. I definitely not. I don't understand. Maybe that's just like a a blip in the story that um, should have never been talked about in Kara's scene, but I kind of just assumed that androids were set for a hundred years before they needed any sort of help from their manufacturer or rejuvenation. I feel like this is happening very quickly, a lot quicker than a hundred years. I'm pretty sure it's only been like months since the, I mean, maybe like two years since androids were first integrated into society like this, but um, I don't know. I'm just a little bit confused why they're deteriorating so quickly. I mean, the kid looks fine. He doesn't look like he was really hurt. He's just laying there. Okay. There's another barrel over here that we can light. I like how we just have a lighter on us. Oh, I can talk to her. North. Time here, wounded Jericho. Let's talk about the area. Who found this place? Nobody knows anymore. Whoever he was, his body's probably laying somewhere on this boat. Time here, spare parts. How long have you been here? How long have you been here? Four weeks, three days, 11 hours. When I escaped, there was nowhere else to go. Jericho seemed as good a place as any. Wounded, spare parts, you. I feel like this is... A lot of these guys in pretty bad shape. That's how the humans treat those who disobey. They despise us. They'll never accept what we are. If you came here for comfort, you came to the wrong place. Okay. She seems like a nice person. I feel like I know this. First of all, I know this actress. I feel like she's someone famous. I'm gonna have to look her up after stream, after I'm done filming, but I also feel like this is the android from the case from the from the club, from the sex worker club. Um, so I was hesitant to press you because if that is her past, I don't really think that she, I mean, look at her. She looks like, she doesn't really want to be messed with. Um, and I felt like probing her about herself, she would have snapped at me. talk to him he's dying too I'm not in very good shape am I my diagnostic program isn't working I don't think it would have anything good to say anyway what happened to you they tied me to the back of a car I think they wanted to have fun. I don't want to shut down. No, I, I don't want to shut down. So sad. So some of them are just injured from wear and tear, I guess. But after talking to that one guy, he made it seem like... Oh, there's someone in here. They made it seem like they're just kind of like breaking down over time. I don't, I don't know. I think she's the one singing. Maybe this is Lucy. Are you Lucy? 
Why are her eyes black? <gasps> Sit down. Wow, she looks very mystical. Is this the leader? Show me. Wow, her voice is cool. Hmm. I'll stop the bleeding. Look at all the LED lights surrounded. Drink this. What is that? Oh, is it blue blood? Wow, so you just drink it to get it back into your body. That's that? We don't get to talk to her more? Give me your hand. Oh. You had it all. And you lost it all. You've seen hell and now hell lives in you. Your heart is troubled. A part of shadow and a part of light. Which will prevail? Your choices will shape our destiny. Wow. That was very cool. Propose a plan to Simon. That was that was pretty deep. And also pertains to humans as well. When you've been through hell and you've seen hell and you know it and you've come back from it, you do have a little piece of darkness in you. But it's important not to let the darkness prevail or else that's all you're going to see is darkness all the time. My heart is definitely filled with a little bit of light and a little bit of dark. But once one takes over more, the light versus the dark for me, it gets easier to choose the light every day. That was such a deep, a deep quote from Lucy. It's also very interesting to me how, how intense they made Lucy. I mean, she's half alive, barely there. She's got all of this components just sticking out and her eyes are just pure black and even her skin was just like swirling and like barely computing it's just so interesting and i think it's crazy to see all of these led lights that are just screwed all over the floor but i noticed as i was walking through that a lot of them still have their leds they're still there they haven't really converged yet. So I don't know if that was like an, an undersight that they forgot to take their LEDs off, but I was gonna comment on that. How I noticed that all of these deviants, even North, who seems a lot less robotic than the ones that are just kind of over the fires and hanging out here. Um, she seems a little bit more like she knows who she is and what she wants, but I noticed the LED light's still there. So it's interesting that they're all over the floor, but they're not taken off of the androids. These ones are just resting over here. Okay, so yeah, let's go talk to Simon again. Simon. I know where we can find spare parts. Cyberlife warehouses in the Detroit Harbor. 
They have everything we need. The docks are guarded. We can't just walk in there and take what we want. Humans will never let us. Which is why we won't ask permission. Mm. We don't have any weapons. And even if we did, none of us knows how to fight. We can steal what we need without fighting. We'll just get ourselves killed. Maybe. But it's better than waiting here to be shut down. Sure. I'm with you. Maybe it's worth a try. A hundred percent completed. I think that's my first one that I've gotten a hundred percent on. <laughs> what a very, very deep start to all of this Jericho stuff. It's kind of like, I mean, I didn't know that there was already a leader here. So that kind of puts my um, Marcus will be the leader of Jericho theory out the window because Lucy is very much in charge. But I noticed that we don't have a like or a dislike or... A relationship with Lucy but I think it's interesting that we have one with Jericho North and Josh and Simon I was interested to see that there isn't one with Lucy so I don't know what the Jericho relationship is and how we can have a relationship with this cult essentially what it is this cult this android start but I guess it is important that we're doing well with Jericho because that is our safe haven right now and maybe with more of what Marcus is planning to do with breaking into the cyber life yard to get more parts for these poor androids that are just stuck here suffering. We can hatch more plans for a takeover. Not really sure how to feel about that. I'm not sure if I am 100% for the androids. Like, yeah, go break into a yard. But Marcus didn't seem like he wanted to go and be destructive about it. He just wants to get the parts that they need to survive. All right, everyone, I think that's it for today. I don't want to stop playing because we didn't get to Kara today, which I'm very, very sad about, but that's all right because we got a lot of very juicy story again today with everything that is going on with Jericho, everything that's happening with Marcus and the Android revolution that seems like it's starting, it's forming. There is a small fire that is burning a little bit inside of this android revolution that i'm ready to see what is going to happen with all of it how is this going to go down with cyber life and stealing the components that they need how can they do it without being destructive how can they do it by being quiet so overall everything that happened with jericho today is eye-opening makes me wonder what is going to happen it makes me wonder what side i'm on it makes me feel like there is this android revolution that has already begun that now Marcus is kind of taking the reins on. I wish that there was more inner monologue to see what he was thinking or feeling the way that Marcus is feeling. I'm not sure if he is pissed or if he's happy or if he's confused. Does he miss Carl at all? Does he think about Carl still? I don't think he wants to go back because he's talking about getting all of these components and that speech that he gave where he said i've never really been free even when i thought that i was free i've never really been free i guess that's him realizing that even though he had such a good life he was still being ordered around so i think that marcus has a lot to say i wish that we could kind of get into his mind a little bit more but I'm sure that's going to come with more conversation now that we've met all of the androids that we've met in this Jericho setting. And I hate calling it a cult because I feel like cult has such a tainted name, but I don't really know what to call it right now. And everything today with Connor was intense. <laughs> I'm sad that I missed some of my QTs. It's going to take a little bit to get used to controller. I do like the controller a lot more. I think it is much more immersive. I feel like I should have started with it to begin with. I don't know why I didn't decide to just play with controller just to start with because then I probably wouldn't have missed so many of my QTs today. And I'm interested to see what else it is about androids that has him so on edge. It seemed like walking away from the situation where we saved him on the roof. He wanted to say something to Connor, but then decided not to. He just said, eh, never mind. Like he just gave up on it. So there's some big block that androids have done to him in the past to have him react this way with Connor. 
and I'm very interested and I'm also scared to see what it is because it has to be something pretty, pretty severe that he doesn't want to talk about it that right away anytime we ask him questions about why he hates androids he immediately shuts down it has to be something pretty terrible that happened to hank so i'm very interested to see what the future looks like in detroit for these androids and humans and what's going to happen with jericho and the start of something big i can feel it starting the ball is rolling things are happening the fire is getting bigger in these androids that want to be free. I'm excited to see where it goes from here, but I will see you guys on the next one. I'm looking forward to hopping in with Kara, hopefully right away because I missed out on the storyline with that today, but we'll see you next time. Bye everyone.